Hello everyone, I'm Ronald Mehta and welcome back to our channel digiate.com. We are your digital aid and we provide free courses on the subjects of business and marketing. Let's understand the dynamics of distribution that is place. A lot of manufacturers do not trade their products directly to end customers. There are a series of mediators or I would say middlemen conducting their various functions. These mediators develop a marketing channel also known as a trade channel or distribution channel. The basic objective of any channel of distribution is to connect the manufacturer of a product to the consumer. The channel comprises various companies that promote the selling of the product. Walmart is one of those mediators that gets us the final product. Moving on, let's take a bird's eye view of a typical distribution channel, in this case, a consumer marketing channel which entails the manufacturer at one end and the consumer at the other and several middlemen depending on the levels of distribution. An ideal distribution channel would be level 3 which includes Manufacturer selling to the wholesaler, through the jobber, retailer or consumer. In case of products that we buy directly online, it is the manufacturer to the consumer or manufacturer, retailer or consumer. Similarly, there is an industrial marketing channel which entails similar middlemen such as a manufacturer representative or an industrial distributor. One thing is common in both the cases, manufacturer at the beginning and in the end is the consumer. Moving on to some case studies uh, which will help us understand the dynamics of distribution better. First one is McDonald's strengthening its drive through game. McDonald's and IBM partner for a hyper-personalized drive through experience. That is customization while you drive through a McDonald's to place an order. IBM is combining its next generation automated order taking solution with customer data to enhance and optimize the customer journey at McDonald's. IBM, a worldwide leader in AI for business and AI-powered customer care, will help McDonald's turn its amassing customer data troughs into valuable personalization and customization engine. Let's see how. The partnership will help McDonald's accelerate its efforts to give the most convenient and unique customer and employee experience possible. The technique leverages historical transaction data that a customer does with McDonald's, as well as catalog and menu items, marketing campaign KPIs, and other variables to analyze the entire data set using machine learning in order to separate each client's unique history from others. In fact, McDonald's is trialing dynamic menu boards that recognize custom license plates in select drive through lanes across Chicago where it's testing out personalized recommendations and popular choices based on your previous orders. Moving on to the next example of Burger King, understanding the distribution pattern of Burger King. Well, Burger King offers the following distribution points. First is the dine-in that we all go to, uh, drive through and finally home delivery via telephone or online ordering. Moving further, Burger King has over 19,000 restaurants worldwide. Out of the 7,257 Burger King restaurants in the US, over 6,500 have drive throughs In the pandemic, with indoor dining banned or restricted, delivery and drive through had been crucial for Burger King's business in the US. In the US, compared to 67% of total sales last year, drive through sales made a whooping 85% of total sales in the second year. Moving on to their distribution strategy during COVID and post-COVID. Burger King revealed a new touchless restaurant design for the current COVID world. With a physical footprint 60% smaller than the traditional Burger King restaurant, the new designs have several options to place order in, such as drive-in, curbside delivery, pickup lockers, drive through on-premise dine-in, and suspended kitchen. Moving on to another case study of Burger King, in which case scaling up their meat-free locations. Burger King opens two meat-free locations in Switzerland. Burger King has converted the location in the Swiss cities of Basel and Geneva into plant-based restaurants for a limited time, like a pop-up store. It is a part of the collaboration with the vegetarian butcher following the success of plant-based Burger King trials in London, Madrid and Cologne. The pop-ups throughout the city provided 14 plant-based cuisine choices, including a debut of several new Cajon Veggie King and Cajon Veggie Long items. The vegetarian butcher says on social media, Due to popular demand, the full vegetarian burger restaurants have now landed in Switzerland. At this time, we've opened two of them. After Cologne, Madrid and London, Burger King puts our new meat on the menu in two of their Basil and Geneva stores. Moving on to another example of Starbucks banking on pickup locations in Toronto. It's been a few years since Starbucks opened its first pickup shop in Toronto to some contention and now they're doing it again. No one is taking the approach that people were against when the concept appeared to discourage the use of reusable mugs back then. The rationale behind this location is to pre-order and prepay for your Starbucks using your app and then pick it up at the location. In Commerce Court and King Street West, there's a first ever pickup only store in Canada. This is how the new pickup store looks like. Moving on to understanding the dynamics of distribution, in this case, the aspect of retailing. Now, retailing is a final link in the distribution channel. 
All commercial and non-commercial activities involved in selling items and services to the final customers for personal and non-business use are included under the term retail. The term retail comes from the ancient French word retailer which means to break bulk or cut off. As a result, the trader who sells items in small amounts might be referred to as a retailer. Retailers buy merchandise in bulk from manufacturers in order to sell smaller quantities to customers. They may acquire enormous amounts of goods directly or indirectly through a wholesaler, as we saw initially in the chart. Moving on to the types of retailer. Well, broadly, there are two types. One is your store retailer. Store-based retailing is the most prevalent form of business in which a company resides and operates from within a store, such as Starbucks. On the other hand, there is something called as a non-store retailer. In most countries, non-store retailing is a relatively new type of business. The retailer does not operate from a physical location in many countries, for instance, Amazon. Moving on to understand the dynamics of distribution, in this case, wholesaling. Now, wholesaling is all about being the bulk supplier. Wholesaling is the practice of selling products to anybody, a person or a business, other than the final consumer who might consume it. The sale of goods in bulk quantities to retailers is known as wholesaling. The repacking and resale at higher prices of the product in smaller amounts by retailers is referred to as wholesaling. Wholesalers may have specialities in selling a specific product or an entire category as well as a wide range of items. Moving further, in certain situations, retailers may need a range of items or components that can be obtained from a single supplier, as in the wholesaler. In such circumstances, wholesaler can also function as intermediaries. They negotiate trades between wholesale and retail companies. Moving further, wholesale has a business-to-business -business structure. Business with a consumer-oriented model are known as retail, that is B2C. The distinction between wholesale and retail is the most significant difference between them. Wholesale firms may operate on any type of non-durable or durable goods. Moving on to an example of wholesaler, that is McLean. McLean is an American wholesale supply chain services company. The company supplies grocery and non-food related items to convenience stores, drug stores, discount stores, military bases, quick service restaurants and casual dining restaurants all throughout the US. Not only this, but it is also a wholesale distributor of wine distilled spirits and beer in some of the US states. Their key clients include Taco Bell, KFC, Pizza Hut, Yum Brands and Long John Silver's. And finally, the types of distribution options when you start off a business. There are three broad options. The first one is intensive distribution. An intensive distribution plan is a marketing technique in which the items or services are distributed to as many as places possible, such as Walmart stores. Exclusive distribution is a strategy and distribution method in which the marketer grants just a few retailers the authority to distribute his or her products. For instance, Louis Vuitton stores. Selective distribution, on the other hand, is a compromise between intensive and exclusive distribution, for instance, McDonald's stores. Let's look at the final case study of how Lego's new plant is streamlining distribution in North America. Well, Lego is set to open its first US factory and has announced plans to invest $1 billion in Chesterfield County, Virginia. The factory will be carbon neutral and have a capacity of 1.7 million square feet, with an anticipated start date for production in the second half of 2025. Currently in the region, Lego products are made at a factory in Monterey, Mexico. The additional factory in US will aid in the long-term expansion of Lego across North America. The new facility in Virginia, like other toy makers, biggest market, aims to reduce the distance products must be transported, according to Carsten Rasmussen, the company's chief operating officer. In addition to Mexico, Lego Group has factories in Denmark, Czech Republic, Hungary, China and Vietnam. So that's it folks, this brings an end to the topic on understanding the dynamics of distribution, that is a strategy for place. These are the list of sources and links referred to for our content in the video. Thank you and stay tuned for more videos.